Good morning, everybody. It's Stephen here for The Idiot Quilter, and this is episode 114 uh, for May the... What's today's date? May the 11th, 2021. And uh, I called this episode, Don't Mix Up Your Stabilizers, and I'll tell you why. And it has to do with the quilt that's behind me. This quilt I just finished, and this is a machine embroidered quilt. Each one of those blocks in the quilt was done by my sewing machine. Now it took a while to do. Each block was about 45 minutes long in order to get it completed. And, uh, but I'm very happy with the end result. Now I added the borders to it and I've quilted it. And I'm gonna give you a little bit more of a close up look for it here in a second. Uh, but I wanna talk a little bit about stabilizers. In this quilt, you had to put in no show mesh stabilizer. stabilizer. Uh, to support the embroidery stitches. And that's exactly what I did, and that worked fine. In fact, you made sort of a little sandwich as you went along with this In The Hoop project, because that's what it is, it's an In The Hoop project. And you would have a sh one sheet of your no-show mesh stabilizer, and then the uh, sewing machine would draw out a placement stitch for where you laid down a piece of batting. And then it would do another stitch line to tack that down, you would trim it, and then it would do another uh, stitch that outline, outlines where you put the white fabric that you see in the background, and you lay that down, it tacks it down, and then it proceeds to do all of the uh, quilting and stitching. Well, <laughs> I accidentally mixed up my stabilizers. It's very easy to mix up no-show mesh with water-soluble stabilizer because the two look very much the same. In fact, the only way you can really tell the two apart from each other is to add a little water to a sample piece to see if it dissolves. Well, I thought I had the right stabilizer in one of the blocks. And after it was finished the whole thing and I went to press it, I noticed that it was bunching up a little bit. The stabilizer was dissolving and I went, uh-oh, water-soluble. But at that point in time, I thought, well, it's okay because this quilt's never going to get washed anyways and, you know, it'll be fine, it'll be supported once it's sewn into the quilt and all that kind of stuff. How wrong can one person be? So, when I got all the blocks together and just before I put on the border pieces, I decided to give it a little press. Well, guess what happened? The block, that's this block that I had in it, actually started to curl up on the edges. Now I know it's not easy to see this in the video, but trust me, this started to buckle. And of course I had it already in the quilt. And that was making, this was an outside row piece or outside column piece. And I looked at it and thought, uh-oh, what am I going to do? I really didn't want to rip it out of the quilt because it meant taking out a whole row, actually a whole column of stitching then taking out the blocks this wasn't even at the top or the bottom of one of the of the column it was in the middle so it meant I had to take it out from the middle do a new one sew that back into the column then get the column back onto the quilt however I just knew that when I put the border on it would be all buckled on one side and make the queer uh, make the queer that's a new word make the quilt uh, very wonky so I ripped it out and I did another one and I did it on the right stabilizer. So just beware of that kind of problem. So what I'm going to do now is to have you have a, take you for a close up of the blocks and of the quilting I did and explain that. But in order to do that, I have to remove my camera from the tripod right now and get up there close and personal. So give me just a second to do that. Okay, so here's a close up look at this quilt. I'll just scan from the top to the bottom. So there are 20 blocks in this quilt. It's not a big quilt. And actually, I don't think I should really call it a quilt because I don't intend to use it as a quilt. I intend to make it a wall hanging uh, because really this would not be a cuddly quilt. The, each one of these blocks is very, very stiff because of the embroidery. Um, and it is a heavy quilt uh, as well. So I think it would be much better as a wall hanging. Plus, I don't intend to ever wash this. Uh, it could be washed, 
Uh, the, I, I'm not really worried about what would happen to it. This quilt has a lot of stitches in it. It's well held together. But um, I don't intend to do that. I just have to find wall space for this. So let's take a closer look at some of the embroidery. So these are all flowers, of course. Don't ask me what type of flowers. I have no idea. I'm not even sure if they're a specific type of flower or not. It doesn't really matter. They're very, very pretty. Now, some of these are complete embroidery, like this one. But this one is actually an in-the-hoop applique. And there are several of these that have applique uh, pieces in them. Um, but for the most part, most of these are just embroidered. Now, I use K-facet uh, fabric for the sashing. And again, all of that sashing around each white block was done in the hoop. Um, so it makes things really, really easy. And then sewing it together was fairly easy, although I had a little problem here and there with some of the intersections. And I'm not going to point those out to you. Um, and really, because this is so colorful, you don't really notice it until you get up close and personal. Now, as far as quilting was concerned, each block already had some stippling done in it, and that was done by the pattern in the sewing machine itself. It did that for me. But when I put the quilt together, I did some straight line walking foot uh, quilting down the sashings and in the white border, and in the outer border, I just did a serpentine walking foot quilting stitch. I used more of the K facet fabric for the binding. And if you want to take a look at the back, I had a piece of this, which is a sort of a gradient, kind of hard to show you. <laughs> but uh, it just kind of goes with the whole thing. And no one sees the back anyways. Um, again, when I quilted this quilt, let me move this over a bit on my track. When I quilted this quilt, I uh, did spray basting and pinning. This is the second quilt that I've done that uh, combination with. And although it was a bit of a problem getting the pins in, because these intersections here are very thick, you're actually going through uh, four layers of fabric uh, for this they were difficult to get in but i did it anyways and you know i'm glad i did because i have absolutely no tucks in this quilt whatsoever um so that's the method i think i'm going to use from now on with all of my quilts i just want to see if i can find a, uh, quilting pins that are a little bit longer than the ones that i have because i think if they were a little longer they'd be easier to get in i don't know if they manufacture something like that but i'm going to find out so that's my pot puree quilt. That's what it was called. It's an Anita, Anita, Anita good design uh, pattern. And um, I'm very pleased with it. It's very colorful. And I got to find a place to hang it. That's all. So let's go back to the rest of the show. Okay. So as I said, I'm really proud of that quilt. And I think it's going to look great somewhere. In the house. Okay, the other quilt that I've been working on at the same time, and I have come to the conclusion that I can't work on two projects at the same time. <laughs> Go figure, right? And that's the Strong and Free quilt by Paul Leger, who's uh, the leader of our Facebook group, uh, the Canadian Men Quilters. And um, I showed you the pattern of that last week, and I'm just showing you now. I'm working on these little blocks here. I've got just about all of these done, which then become this block here. And then those blocks all go together. And then I have that giant red maple leaf applique that I have to put together. So that's my next project to get done. And I'm probably about halfway there. Um, so I'm going to start concentrating my efforts on that. I really wanted to get this one done because basically it was tying up my embroidery machine so I couldn't get to other projects while I was doing this one. And uh, yeah, so work on one at a time, at least for me. Other people might be able to, you know, do that, but I can do it, but it seems like I'm not getting anything finished. 
when I work on multiple projects. You know, my attention is diverted back and forth. Okay, so what else? Okay, in the last week we had craft and chat. And that, you know, we have that once a month. We had a really good session. We had some new people. That was great. Um, so I got a lot done. Actually, I worked on the strong and free quilt um, that day. And I got a lot of those little blocks uh, done. And it was just nice visiting with other people, seeing what they were making. And yeah, I had a really nice time. And I think everybody else did. So if you want to join us, just uh, watch for the announcement of the next one, which will be the first Wednesday in June. Uh, I'm not sure what the exact date of that is. I don't have my calendar handy, but that's when the next one will be. And usually a week before in all of my uh, different videos that I put up every week on my channel, I put the Zoom listing for that and all are welcome. And as I've said before, it's like a broken record, really. Uh, you don't have to be a quilter to join us. You can be working on any project that grabs you. Okay. In fact, one of our regulars had just bought a house and she was making her lists for getting herself organized for her move. So, you know, it doesn't matter. Whatever. Um, come and join us. Have a good time. Okay. So, what else? Another project. I um, finally got this from Dinky Doo. It took a while. Their shipping is not particularly fast. But I talked about that last week when I uh, reviewed uh, Dinky Doo's uh, website. Um, but this is the pattern that I had ordered from them. Sorry about the glare. And it is a, a bag, in control bag, by bags by Annie, um, or just by Annie, I guess it is, by Annie.com. I have never made a by Annie pattern, but I have read a lot of good things about her patterns. Everybody says that they are um, really easy to follow, very detailed, and, you know, make a successful project. So this is called in, con in Control, and you can see it's kind of a bag for holding your sewing or crafting supplies, things like that. So I'm gathering my materials for this. Um, I needed some hardware. Uh, actually, Walter had some bag hardware that he gave me that um, he's not using. And um, I think I've got pretty much everything else that I need to make that bag. I just need to make that bag. I haven't made a bag in a while, so this may be a bit tricky. And I noticed that it's got some interesting finishing touches to it that I've never done before. But that's all the nature of the beast, isn't it? Uh, thinking outside of your box and trying something new to challenge yourself. I'm sure I can get through it. Um, eh, if I need help, maybe Walter can help me because, you know, he makes bags or has made bags, a lot of bags in the past, um, more than me. So he knows what he's doing. So I'll go to him. Okay, so that's another project, but not until I get the strong and free quilt done. All right. Um, I signed up for uh, a website. I'm sure many of you have heard of it. It's called The Quilt Show. It features Alex Anderson and Ricky Timms, both very prominent in the quilting community. Um, my very first quilt was an Alex Anderson design. And uh, I've been debating whether or not, because it's a membership thing, it's not that expensive. It's $49 US for a year for full access. It gives you access to all of their shows, and I do enjoy watching their shows, but they also have a whole lot more, as I've discovered, on their uh, website. They have um, patterns, they have tutorials, they have uh, they have an encyclopedia on there of, you know, quilting terminology and techniques, which looks very useful. Um, they have interviews with experts, all kinds of stuff. And... Um, so I'm taking a chance on it. Now I had a little problem. I signed up for the one week free membership trial. And of course, when you do that, you also give them your credit card number because automatically you become fully part of the system um, after the week's trial. But if you cancel before the week is out, then you don't have to worry about anything. So they say. Um, so. I went on, I filled out all of that and everything, and they were supposed to send me an activation code by email. Um, they did warn you to check your spam, uh, because sometimes those things do go into your spam. And uh, when you got that, 
then you could activate and away you go. Well, I never got the email. I waited a whole day, nothing came through. Um, so I thought, well, what's the problem there? Uh, so I checked spam, nope, nothing there. Uh, I was getting a little worried because, okay, one, it's an American company and not that I worry about American companies that much, but the thing is I'm in Canada and it's really easy to dismiss somebody that's not in your own country kind of a thing. I didn't think they would do that because they're pretty legit. They've been around for a, quite a long time. So I figured there was a problem with the system. So I went to their FAQs and didn't find anything there that was helpful. So I finally went found their contact list and I sent an email out. Actually, I filled out a help ticket. So I explained what my situation was, blah, blah, blah. And uh, they sent me a confirmation number and said they'd get to it. Well, I didn't hear anything from them and I was getting impatient because I only had one week free trial on this and I suddenly didn't want to have my credit card charged if this thing wasn't going to work for me. So I found a contact number, a phone number. So I called it. I, nobody answered. I went into what I should be in, I guess. They had a very simple menu system. <laughs> That's not, not something you come across every day. Most of them take you through like 10 minutes of menu things to get you nobody. Um, left a message, detailed message, who I was, how to contact me, what my problem was, all that kind of stuff. Heard nothing from them. Now, I have to say I was getting a little impatient, but I was getting a little worried. I only, at this point now, I'm down to about five days in the free membership, which I couldn't use. So, um, I finally, out, I, I called again. I left three messages. Nobody got back to me. I finally decided I was desperate. I knew that Ricky Timms, who's one of the creators of The Quilt Show, I found him on Facebook. And I contacted him. Let's go right to the top, shall we? I didn't expect to hear anything from Ricky Timms. I mean, who am I compared to Ricky Timms? Wow. Within minutes, literally minutes, he messaged me. Reached straight out. I was flabbergasted. Um, and uh, he said, well, that wasn't something that he had, like, he had any control over but he knew they were having some problems because they were doing some revamping on the, on the website or whatever. He would make sure that my problem was sent to somebody who could fix it. Wow. Yeah, he did. He sent it to a, a man called John Anderson, who I have now found out is one of the producers, I guess, of the show. John Anderson immediately called me by phone to solve the problem. He was extremely apologetic. Um, he said they were having some bugs they were trying to work out. He appreciated that I had contacted them to let them know what the problem was because they were trying to work these problems out. And right then and there, on the spot, while I was still on the phone, he was able to activate my account. I tested it out, it worked fine. Meanwhile, Ricky Timms is still messaging me, telling me, yep, he got that message out and everything, and again, apologetic for the whole thing. And I felt really kind of a little embarrassed. I mean, I, I didn't want to bother Ricky Timms about this, um, but I did, and it was extremely effective. Now, I'm not recommending that you bug Ricky Timms about this, but I have to say, I was very much impressed uh, with all of that and I understand I clearly they explained the problem and I know it was not BS it was you know the honest truth and these things happen um, but now I am a happy member of the quilt show and I'm looking forward I've already watched some of their videos and gleaned some information from those and I'm really really happy that I have joined it so as I said it's not that expensive $49 a year for full membership uh, American so that's probably going to work out to about 60 bucks Canadian but you want to know something I spent more on uh, magazine subscriptions where you only got like four uh, copies a year like uh, Stampington um, their magazines which I love but I was spending eighty dollars Canadian for four issues in a year so this is a bargoon a real bargoon I think so I'm really thrilled to have that and thanks to several people who recommended this to me uh, we were talking about it on craft and chat 
uh, for a few minutes and some other things people sent me messages says you should really join it they were right so thank you for that okay so that takes us to uh, Wally Sows. I did a very short little video of Walter's latest project and it is his coat. He's been working on this coat and if you're a follower of Stephen and Walter Live you will have seen this in various stages over the last few weeks. This coat seems to have been going on forever. These were, it's taken a long time. Um, he does it with an online class from a friend of ours who offers these classes um, and he's a really good teacher. And Walter says so. Um, I don't know. I don't do garment sewing, so I have no idea. But uh, the final product is really, really nice. So I'm going to insert that little video I made right here. Okay, so this week on Wally Sews, he has got his jacket almost completely finished, and here it is. Um, so let's just start with, uh, well, let's take a look at your lining, because this is all fully lined. Very well, nice. I still have to hem it. it still has to be hemmed at the bottom, but he's got the lining all in, and you notice some features here. There's drawstring down in the bottom, and he has, which he's very proud of, his inside pocket as well. And you can see that this has a half collar. I don't know, is there a technical name for that type I of collar? I don't know, it's a stand up collar. Stand up collar. It has epaulets, which are great if you're wearing a beret uh, <laughs> on there. Um, let's see the cuffs. Show the cuffs. Very nice. Now you have to put, put buttons on them. I have to yet. put buttons on them. And actually what happened is I kind of ran out of buttons. I thought I had enough. So I had to order some more from Amazon. So what, so, are they uh, special kind of button? Are they the same ones that are on the epaulets? Yeah, they're the same ones that are on the epaulets. So I'm putting on the, that color button on everywhere. So, so those are kind of a snap, put, are they? Yeah, they're a snap. Oh, okay. And that's what's going to go down the front? Yeah. Okay, and then you have a zipper in it, of course, too. Yeah, and I have a zipper. It zips up. So, what kind of fabric is the uh, outer shell made of? It's it's a it's a twelve ounce um, cotton twill. It is fairly heavy coat, so yeah. this would probably work right into the winter. Yeah, from actually, the fall to the winter. It's got lots of room in it. I you can wear a sweater underneath it if it if you want. So actually, can you wear it in the winter too? So yeah, well, that's what I was just saying. And uh, of course, the pockets will have uh, their pleated pockets, and they will have snaps too. Snaps really. on the top that'll yeah. match. Yeah. And notice your top stitching on all of the pockets and everything, which I think gives it a very finished mm -hmm. look. Uh, with this also would you make another one yeah i think i would oh. actually it wasn't too bad good I'll put my a, order there's now. a lot of uh pieces the only problem is that there's lots of pieces to sew together because if you get for instance the back the back has uh one two three four five pieces on the back six if you count the yoke so yeah, well, it looks very, very professional. And uh, yeah, when I first saw the design of this, I said I didn't like it with the epaulets and I don't know, but actually now, yeah, I think it needs the epaulets. It just adds that little bit of finesse to it, I guess. And I love the lining fabric. What is the lining fabric? I'm not sure it's a type of polyester or something. Yeah. But it looks very nice yeah. in there too. So yeah, very nice, very good and walking away okay so this takes us to my demo of the week and this week i want to talk a little bit i'm not really going to demonstrate this but i think you'll get the point about how to clean the base of your iron okay we all get gunk on the bottom of our iron we all get discoloration on the bottom of our iron and you know it can be caused by a multiple of reasons um probably the most significant one is you're doing some uh, applique uh, or some interfacing that you have to iron on to something and you know you accidentally put the iron or the iron accidentally touches the sticky stuff the glue and gets all over the bottom of your iron and picks up all the dirt and everything else from your uh, sewing mat and yeah it gunks it up and that's not nice especially when you're trying to press white <laughs> ask me how I know so how do you clean that off well I found a, a tip sheet on the internet telling you how to do this using various methods and I tried most of them. None of them really worked. 
I really had a real sticky problem on my hands. So it, this was not just your average. This was heavy duty. I never do anything halfway. Um, so if I'm going to wreck something, I'm going to wreck it good. And I don't want to wreck this iron because this is my $350 Rowenta steam tank iron, which I love. Um, but anyways, I tried different methods. One of them was to do some kind of soak a cloth, a cloth in vinegar and then put your iron on top of it, a cold iron on top of it, let it sit for 30 minutes and that, and then that would clean it off. That didn't work. Not for what I had on it anyways. What did I have on it? I just had some steam seam stuck to it. That was all. But anyways, that didn't work. Um, I tried a couple of their other mes methods. Those didn't work. But one method did work really well. But before I talk about that, I want to talk about something else you can buy. And in my opinion, this is absolutely useless. Don't waste your money. Maybe you've had good luck with it. I don't know. I know I usually get comments when I say it didn't work for me. I usually get someone who makes a comment what, well, it worked for me. Well, I'm happy for you. I'm glad it did. But you know what that sounds like when you make a comment like that? It's like, you're a stupid idiot. I know what I'm doing. You don't know what you're doing. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, maybe I'm exaggerating. But this kind of stuff and this is by Dritz but I'm sure there's other companies that make it too and this one's called iron off hot iron cleaner and it's a little paste and you know you heat up your iron you put put some of this on it and uh, rub it around and let it sit for a minute or two and then you wipe it all off and it's supposed to clean your iron not the not mine didn't clean my iron not at all. And what I hate about this stuff is it gets into the holes of you like your steam holes in your iron as well. And they tell you to be careful of that. And then you got to take a Q-tip or something like that. Or in my case, I just blast the hell out of it with the steam setting. But it didn't take the stuff off. In fact, it hardly took off anything at all. Maybe if it was lightly um, dirty or something like that, maybe this would work. But as far as I'm concerned, this stuff's garbage. Um, so what does work? Well, I've had a lot of luck with using this, a dryer sheet. All you do is take a dryer sheet, maybe two, sometimes I take two, put them together, lay them down onto my, uh, my pressing mat. In my case, it's a wool mat. And, uh, you just go around and around and around it with a hot iron. And then I sometimes give it a little blast of steam as well. And that takes off a lot of gunk. It really works. Not only that, but if it's scented, it leaves your wool mat smelling so nice <laughs> afterwards too. So this really does work. And these are cheap. You can go to the dollar store and buy a box of these. Okay, you don't need any particular brand. Um, however, I did do that on the bottom of the, my steam iron this time, but it was really, really baked on gunk. So this did not do, it took a little off, but it wasn't enough. Now, one of the suggestions I saw on this tip sheet that I downloaded from the internet was to use a Mr. Clean magic eraser. Now, at first I was hesitant. Walter said, you don't want to use that. You'll scrape the bottom of your iron. Well, I thought, will you? Because I've used this on walls to take off black marks and it works really, really well. Um, I use these a lot for lots of things. So I thought, what the heck, let's give it a try. It did not scratch the bottom of my iron and it worked like a charm. It took that gunk right off. Now, how did I use this? Now, this one's all discolored because, you know, I didn't throw it away yet because I've still got more of this I can use in the future. But it, it, usually they're white, as you know. What I did was I put this down on my mat, took my iron, all heated up a hot iron and I just went in a circular motion and up and down all around the top of this and I gave it every now and then a little burst of steam too so that moistened it up took the stuff right off right off this worked so well it did not mark up my iron it did not plug up my uh, steam holes it was shiny clean like the day I bought it and just to finish it off I used a dryer sheet afterwards, just sort of like polishing. So my recommendation, a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser, eraser sponge. 
works really, really well. For light stuff, you can probably just use a dryer sheet. For the heavier stuff, use this. So that's my tip for this week. Do not use this crap. I know, I'm gonna get emails. People are gonna say, you know, I use the cream all the time, it works like a charm. Okay, if it's working for you, as I always say, this is what I've experienced. This is what works for me. If something else works for you, then stick with it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Okay, so that takes us to subscri Subscribers Quilt of the Week. And this is from Donna Bogart. And I'm going to insert the little video that I made of her lovely quilts right here, right now. This week's subscriber quilts come from Donna Bogart, and Donna has shared some of her creations with us before, and these are three more. She says about the first one, the yellow and blue quilt is just flimsy, but I started it in 2000, finished it this week, another UFO done. The other is a new, just finished for my daughter for Christmas, quilted on my embroidery machine. And the blue one, I just finished for my granddaughter for Christmas, quilting it tomorrow. Well, we're getting ahead of the Christmas season, aren't we, Donna? And all three quilts are extremely lovely, and I love the fact that you have quilted them on an embroidery machine, because as you know, I have given that a try with mixed results. So I hope your results are satisfactory. So thank you for sharing, Donna. They're lovely. And if you'd like to have your quilts featured um, here on the channel, Please feel free to send me pictures and a little blurb about them. Um, one word of caution, okay, or caution or something. And I don't want to sound ungrateful because I'm not. I really appreciate people sending me these pictures of what they've been working on. And it doesn't just have to be quilts. It can be garments. It can be whatever you're doing, a craft or something like that. But please try to limit yourself to one or two pictures <laughs> um, because... What you don't know is when I make the little video, it does take me a little time to do that. And as much as I appreciate you sending me those and I want you to send them to me, I don't want to see, seem like, you know, um, what's the expression? Um, looking a gift horse in the mouth or something like that. Anyways, not even sure what that means. But the problem is if you send me all kinds of them at once, it takes me a while to make the little video. So, and I don't want to screw up on them as well because, you know, I have a system for when they come into me, how I organize them in my files and everything because I don't want to be featuring somebody's quilt with a picture of somebody else's quilt in there. Okay, I'm trying to keep it straight. So if you could limit your pictures, please, to just one or two, uh, that would be great. That would really help me out. Um, nothing saying though you can't send me more later on because you can. I don't mind repeats uh, as far as individuals. Everybody's got lots of things to show. And I do have a plan. I save all these pictures and at some point I'm going to put them all together as one big slideshow, quilt show, a, a virtual quilt show of everybody's quilts that they have sent me and things like that and uh, put it all together as one big slideshow. So yeah. That's my plan. Okay, so the information on how to send that uh, those pictures to me is in the show notes, as is a link to this past week's So Chatty, episode 7. We talked all about needles, and I hope we didn't confuse people, because needles are confusing. Um, also, there's a link to uh, the Ultimate Sewing, always there, my favorite quilt store. The Lindley General Store, which we're going to talk about today, I'm featuring it today. Uh, I have some fabrics from them to show you, and I also want to talk about their site because I was really, really impressed with them. And uh, a pattern that I've got on my vision wall, and the YouTube channel of this week, and it's one I'm going to talk about right now, and everybody knows this one, I am sure. If you've been on the internet doing searches, uh, for quilt stores or quilt shops or tutorials or on YouTube, you have come across this shop. And it's called the Fat Quarter Shop. And everybody knows it, I'm sure. But just in case you don't, I'm going to talk a little bit about it. When I first got into quilting, that was one of the first uh, YouTube channels I found. And uh, I really liked it. I learned a lot from it. Um, 
I have to be honest. I, I'm always honest about it. And this is not to insult the host. But the uh, lady who does this, what's her name? You'll all know what it is. I can't think of her name right now. Kimberly. Kimberly, that's her name. Seems like a very lovely lady, but she seemed like a complete airhead. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to say it. When I first watched the Fat Quarter Shop, but I soon realized she is not an airhead. She is extremely clever, knows exactly what she's doing, and runs an excellent YouTube channel. Um, so if she ever hears me say this, she probably won't, but I want to apologize for calling her an airhead. That was my first impression. I'm sorry, but I don't have that impression anymore. Okay. Um, it is a great site and it, to explain it, if you have never been on the Fat Quarter Shop, I'm going to read the little blurb that Kimberly wrote up or somebody in her corporation wrote up about the Fat Quarter Shop because I think it really tells you more about it in a more concise way than I can. The Fat Quarter Shop was founded in 2003 by Kimberly Jolly. An avid quilter, Kimberly began her shop as a side business while still working a corporate position, cutting, packing, and shipping right out of her house during evenings and weekends. From the very beginning, she was committed to delivering top-notch service for every single order and customer. As the Fat Quarter Shop's reputation grew, Kimberly decided to make it a full-time operation. Her husband, Kevin, joined her not long after, and with his help, lots of hard work and a tireless commitment, the store began to grow. Uh, she says, we will be posting many features, including sewing tutorials, tutorials using notions, and interviews with your favorite fabric designers. And she does follow through with that. Now, I have to admit, I haven't been watching it as regularly as I used to watch it. Um, and I think that's probable because I'm not really a rank beginner any, anymore. So, you know, I'm a little bit more choosy about what I watch on YouTube, but nevertheless, it is still an excellent resource. Um, I have never ordered anything from the Fat Quarter Shop, uh, but they have lots to choose from. And the only reason I haven't is because they're in the States, I'm in Canada, so we have the logistics of shipping and shipping prices and the dollar exchange and all that kind of thing. That's the only reason why I've never ordered anything from them. But if you are new to quilting or you know you haven't been in this for very long or even if you have you'll probably want to check out the fat quarter shop and i have the link to the youtube channel in the show notes okay so that takes us to what have i bought in the last week well let's start with what i bought from my favorite quilting store in my area ultimate sewing um i saw this online it's on their store online and it is a new i think it's a relatively new line of fabric at least it's new to me never saw it before it's called bio geo it's by adrian leban and it's for free spirit fabrics and it is wild literally so i'm going to show this to you here's one of the pieces fun 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 and i bought other pieces in the line in fact i bought I think I bought pretty much everything in the line that Ultimate Sewing had to offer. Here's another one. And of course, these all coordinate with each other, which is something that I love. But you can see the patterns are, are really, really kind of wild. I have no plans yet for how I'm going to use this, but you know, it's pretty and you know how I love pretty. So I bought two meters of each. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have 14 meters of this fabric. So I should be able to make something great out of those. Um, I don't think I'll use all of them in the same quilt. I don't know. Depends. I have to find a pattern that is worthy of this. And then I got my order from an uh, online quilt store I've just discovered. In fact, somebody recommended it to me. It's called the Lin Lindley General Store. And I'm going to talk more about that in a few minutes because it's the store I'm going to feature this week. And I bought a bunch of these. 
Now, what are these? These are, what are they called? I think I bought some batiks and another line. So let me just sort myself out here. These batiks come from Northcott. I think they call them, now I'm not sure how to say it. Is it Banyan? Banyan? Something? Ban, Banya? Ban, bah, bah. I don't know. But anyways, I love batiks. This is a little bit, it's, it's in my color scheme, but it's a little not as bright and bold as I usually get. But I still think they're very, they've got something very elegant about the design. So I bought two meters of each of those. So I've got one, two, three, six meters of that fabric. And then this line, which I've got to look on the salvage here. So just let me check. Why is it I can never find salvages when I want salvages? Is that a salvage? Okay, it would be nice. <laughs> I should have, done. oh yeah, 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 here it is. Bear with me. Bear with me. Okay, this is by Northcott as well, and it is called New Dawn. It is by Deborah Edwards and Melanie Samra by Northcott. It's kind of a marbly look. I like I like things that have that marbled streaked look to them. Love this. So these are a little bit on the darker side. Now these might go well with some of the batiks that I just showed you too, like this one with, you know, this one. And even for that matter, this one. So mix and match here. And actually that's what I did. Uh, when I buy fabric online, I will often look at um, what I can get that uh, from different lines that I can sort of mix and match uh, as well. I know maybe that's not the way to buy fabric, but I do. <laughs> so it's just me. Um, or maybe it's not just me. I don't know. But anyways, so I'm just trying to tidy up here. I don't like a whole lot of stuff <laughs> out of place. Um, call me OCD. So those are really nice. And those all came from the Lindley General Store, which, okay, give me a second here while I get things to go where they're supposed to go. Okay, there they are. Um, so that's what I'm gonna talk about now is the Lindley General Store coffee. So it is, where is it located? It is located in Meaford, Ontario. However, they do not have a physical store. Um, but they have a very extensive website. So I've put the link to the website in the show notes. Now, someone recommended this to me and I'm sorry, I don't remember who it was. And I'm so glad they did because it is now becoming very quickly my second favorite store in Ontario. Um, you know my first one's Ultimate Sewing. Um, so, what about fabric? Now, do I have put here, do not have a huge selection of fabric, but good for basics and blenders and a good selection of Northcott, starting at about $16 a meter, which is pretty good. Uh, they do have lots of pre-cuts. And they have a lot of the very current designs as well. So, you know, they're not selling old stuff here. They're keeping up. Um, they do have end of bolts, which they put on sale uh, as well. You don't find that on a lot of quilt store sites. At least I haven't found that. Um, but they sell more than just fabric. If you're a knitter, they do sell yarn and they sell embroidery floss. So they have a, a wider expansion of products. They also sell, get this, crafting supplies. Okay. Like, and they sell paper and stationery uh, supplies as well. So really they call themselves a general store. They really are a general store. 
They even have health and beauty products and housewares. Like this is one stop shopping. I couldn't believe what they have on there. Um, and remember, they do not have a physical store. This is all online. Do they sell sewing machines? No, but they sell everything else. Um, their notions, they have a very extensive supply of everything you could possibly need. Rulers, tools, you name it. Um, patterns, they had tons of patterns, including sewing patterns. Okay, so now I didn't look, but they might actually sell uh, garment fabrics as well. I'm not sure if they did. I don't remember seeing any of that, but probably because I was focusing more on the quilting, but they might. Um, but they do have sewing patterns. Uh, their thread, they have an excellent selection of all types and brands of threads. And they even have something called a thread matching service, where I guess you tell them the fabric you are planning to use in your quilt or whatever, and they will match up the threads that will work well in terms of color. They do charge you a little, a fee for that. Um, but it didn't look like that expensive. So if you're really struggling with, you know, what thread you want to quilt with or whatever, this might be something you would find of interest. Um, they don't seem to have classes. Well, first of all, they don't have a physical location when we could meet physically, but they don't seem to offer any online classes either. Um, but their story is very interesting about how they got started. So I um, copied it out and I'm going to read it to you because I think it's worth hearing. A long time ago in a land far away, seriously folks, our story began in the Barbados. You see, Lindley General Store might not have been around for a terribly long time, but our family has been in a small business for a very long time. It started in an old barn well over 30 years ago. Yep, my dad and his siblings built a business out of an old cow shed. When we moved to Canada in 2015, we all knew that we'd want to start our own small, we all want to start our own a small business again. We tossed around a lot of ideas until we hit upon the idea of an online general store. I don't mind telling you we got more than our fair share of stares from people when we said we were going to start an online general store. Apparently, it's not something you do every day. And that's true. I have not found any other store like this. What's with the name? We arrived at the name Lindley General Store after much careful consideration and deliber deliberation. Just kidding. Lindley was my paternal grandfather's middle name. Fun fact, the Lindley font in our logo is loosely based off his handwriting. The general store part of the name is no less sentimental, although quite a different story. We grew up without TV and our main form of entertainment was books. My mom would read to us when we were younger. She read the entire Little House series to us, including the Martha, Charlotte and Caroline years. I grew up absolutely enamored with the idea of weaving, quilting, churning my own butter and living in a log cabin. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I think the thing that stood out most in my memory was Laura's description of the general store in the town of Pippin. The barrels of dried goods, the aisles of candy, candles, canning supplies, and just about everything else you could think of, and oh, the bolts of brightly colored calicos, let's just say that quilt fabric was always going to be part of our general store. So very interesting background story, and uh, I think it creates a certain uh, atmosphere for this kind of online store. And that's something you don't get a lot of when you go online. You don't get a feeling or an atmosphere for a store. You get that when you walk in to a quilt shop, but you don't, that is not something that you can pick up on, I think, easily on an online store or in an online store. This one does by reading that. So that's why I want to read it to you. Now, what about shipping? Shipping via Canada Post, Pure Later, UPS, and Campar are all available, they say. Shipping rates are calculated real-time at checkout based on your address and the products that you have in your cart. So, they say that on orders over $95 Canadian, we offer free shipping within Ontario and Quebec up to $25 Canadian. Should shipping rates to your address exceed $25 Canadian, we reserve the right to request that you pay a percentage of the shipping rate. Well. I ordered quite a bit from them and that weight gets heavy, but it was over $95. 
and they didn't charge me anything extra for shipping. So I think they're fairly lenient on that. So that was bonus. Like $95, a lot of quilt stores that I've been reviewing on here, it's $150 to $200 before you get free shipping. So that's pretty good. One drawback is you have to live in Quebec or Ontario to get that free shipping. Now, on orders outside of Ontario and Quebec, it says over $95, and this includes the USA, they say, we offer $5 Canadian flat rate shipping. Hmm. Should shipping rates to your address exceed $25 Canadian, we reserve the right to request that you pay an additional percentage of the shipping rate. So that's over $95 Canadian, but if you're in the US, especially, or other parts of Canada, they'll only charge you five bucks. And again, if it's over $25 for them to ship it to you, then you're, they're going to charge you a percentage. They don't say what that percentage is, but I have a feeling it's probably very, very reasonable. And they ship to all Canadian provinces and territories, and we also ship to the USA, they say. Now, I don't know about, inter well, they do have a note about international. We do not ship to international except upon request and require that all international customers pay for the tra for tracked air parcel. I have a feeling the reason they don't ship internationally is probably because of the cost. It's probably more than what you're spending for on the fabric or the notions or the crafting supplies. So, I highly recommend them. Now, I'm going to tell you what else impressed me. So, I ordered on middle of last week, I think I'm on a Wednesday or Thursday. I got my shipment before the end of the week. I got it within two days. That is miraculous. Now, they do have uh, prices listed if you want it even faster than that from like Campar. But really, from my first experience anyways, I don't think it would be worth the spend. I think they charge $13 uh, if you go with uh, Perlator or Campar for quicker service. But I got it in two days from Canada Post or however they shipped it. No, I think it actually came by Perlator. But I did not pay for them to ship it by Perlator. Um, so I got it in two days. That was really good. And they sent me a nice little thank you note with a code. It says use code uh, for you know, 10% off on my next order. I'm not sharing this code with you because um, I don't know if I can <laughs> because it came with my order. So I'm not going to do that. Uh, but I will definitely uh, order from them again. So that's the Lindley General Store in Meaford, Ontario, online only. Links in the show notes. Okay, so that takes us pretty much to the end of today's episode. And just a final thought, and this was brought up by uh, another regular viewer uh, here, and uh, they were pissed off with uh, some Canadian fabric stores that um, price their products in U.S. dollars. Now, I haven't come across any of those yet, but I have seen those on other kinds of websites that aren't necessarily quilt stores. But nevertheless, yeah, that pisses me off too, um, because... I want to know what it is in Canadian dollars. Not only that, by them pricing things in US dollars, that I think is just greedy. They're just going with the exchange rate. Um, that means they're going to get more money uh, for that. So, you know, if they're pricing something at $16 a meter US, well, that's like 18, 18.50 a meter Canadian. So they're a Canadian store. So stop doing that. That's not fair. And what really pisses me off is with a Canadian store, when they put their prices for their fabric in yardage, by the yard, not by the meter either. That's why. Why do you do that? I don't understand that. Are you appealing to uh, the Americans? Um, so yeah, I agree. I want it in Canadian dollars if you're a Canadian online store, and I want it in meters, not yards, if you're a Canadian online store. So that's my final thought on that. Um, so I hope you have a good week. I have projects to work on, so I'll be showing some of those to you probably next week. And I hope you're happy, and I hope you're safe, and 
go off and to your happy spot and quilt something or sew something or make something that makes you happy. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye for now.